Let's see how we can reduce the mathematical model to a two-dimensional problem by making the axisymmetric assumption. And I'll give you a quick overview of how this is done. Um, and in my free online simulations course at edx.org, I describe this in more detail in module four under the pipe flow exercise. So that's a place you could look to, to learn more. And the idea in the axiometric, um, with the axiometric assumption is that you switch to cylindrical coordinates, r, theta, z, and I will indicate what those coordinates are in a moment. So rather than use the usual Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z, okay, I don't use that, I, I do, I use r, theta, z. And to see what these are, if I go to a cross section to the pipe, so this is the pipe wall, pipe wall, this is the pipe axis, that's the axial coordinate, and that's a radial coordinate. And if I look at uh, this, the pipe along here, I will see this, I'll see a circular cross section. And let's say that's an X coordinate and that's a Y coordinate. And if I pick a point over here, okay, this distance would be R. That's the radial coordinate, and that angle would be theta. And then z is the the uh, the distance along the the axis of that that particular cross section. And we say, you know what? We'll assume that for since we have a circular cross section, there's no variation along. The, the circumferential coordinates, so pressure, for instance, would vary only along the radial and axial coordinates. And compare that to, you know, when we make the usual 2D assumption, where you would say P is a function of just X and Y. So this is a, you, you reduce it to a 2D problem, but not in the usual sense that we, uh, we often do. And the velocity, we have to decompose into a radial component, the axial component, and a swirl component. Um, so in this view, okay, that's going to be the radial velocity. That's going to be the circumferential velocity. And there's um, that's a swirl kind of thing. So we, we knock off. Um, we say that's zero. There's no swirl. And... Um, so in this view, if the point is over there, um, that would be the, the axial, and that would be the radial velocity. And so we have two components of velocity, and they depend only on two coordinates, r and z. Um, and before I go to talk about the domain, uh, let's look at the number of unknown functions we have. So we have pressure, uh, radial velocity, axial velocity, and since we have heating, we also have temperature, which again is a function of R and Z, and we have density, which is also a function of R and Z. The density can vary because of the heating um, for air. So we have four or five. So we have five unknown two-dimensional functions to determine. And with the axisymmetric assumption, we can also uh, figure out what is the domain over which we want to solve the governing equations. And it turns out to be a rectangle. Um, and let me explain this. So this is the axial coordinate. That's the axis of symmetry. Um, that's a radial coordinate. That's the wall. That's where the flow is coming in. And that's where the flow is going out. So if I take this rectangle and revolve it 360 degrees, about the axis, I'll get the full pipe geometry. But I need to uh, solve the governing equations only in the rectangle because of, you know, there being no variation in the, in the circumferential direction. And to figure out what is the length of the pipe we need to, you know, use in the simulation, uh, we make a choice. We say, here is the schematic of the experiment, okay? And a is where there's a pressure transducer at the start of the flow development section. The location D is, um, there's also pressure transducer there, 
at the end, this is at the end of the adiabatic mixing section. So we say that the length of the pipe included in the simulation is from A to D. So this length L um, is going to be from A to D. Now, in the experimental setup, you know, the pipe continues and you have a fan here and so on, but that we don't include in the simulation, okay? And we will use the, uh, the experimentally determined pressure as a boundary condition um, on, over there, and that way we can ignore this part of the pipe. So that hopefully gives you an overview of, you know, how you simplify the problem using uh, the axiometric assumption and why your uh, domain is a rectangle. Um, so let's move on to talking about what the governing equations are.